up and readying that system for operation. And you look good. And we've passed through Mach 1 and Mach 2. Rumble strips there, everything looks good. All three strips operating as expected. Operating operating as expected. Everything looks good. And we fired the power valve, pressurizing the reactor control system on the second stage. Structure's coming up. Everything looks good there. What we're looking for is going to close loop guides. Up in three or four seconds. And we've started a close loop guide. We have maneuvering as expected. All three engines continue to look good. And we are three minutes to Corbico. And the vehicle is now one half its liftoff weight. All three engines operating normally. Everything looking good. And the vehicle is now 29 nautical miles in altitude. Uh, 64 miles downrange, traveling at 5,300 miles per hour. Everything continues to look good. And we've just passed through the Carmen line, reaching 100 kilometers in altitude. Everything looking good. Two minutes to Corbico, coming up on throttle down on the strap-ons. And we've begun throttling down the strap-on boosters in preparation for cutoff. We've now achieved min-power level on the strap-ons. And cutoff. We have cutoff port and starboard boosters coming up on strap-on. And we have strap-on separation. Disturbances look good. Throttled up the core booster. We're now at EPL on um, the single stage booster. And we've re enabled steering following separation of the strap ons. Everything looking good. We just heard confirmation of port and starboard booster jettison. We have about a minute and a half until we reach our next and mission event booster engine power. Hold on the RL10. One minute to Corbico. Let's see, yeah, housing temps respond as expected on the RL-10, and we've started LH-2 boost phase chill down. Housing temps responding as expected. Flight control disturbances are small, and the core RS-68 continues to operate as expected. About 20 seconds to our next mark event, throttling down the core booster in preparation for BECO. And core booster is throttling down, coming up on a booster engine cutoff. And we have BECO. Cut off on the booster, everything looking good. And state operation occurred right as expected. NEDs have deployed. And we have pre start, start, and full thrust. RL10 is up and running normally. Everything looking good. Enabled steering of the second stage. Second stage operating normally. Coming up on bearing separation. Uh, 
about 10 seconds away from pairing up. Five seconds to pairing set, and we have pairing separation. Disturbances look good. Upper stage is operating normally. And once again, steering has been re-enabled after the separation event. This is Delta Mission Control at T plus six right minutes and 55 seconds. Right. We just heard flight commentator right. Rob Gannon confirm the successful completion of the early phase of today's flight and all systems continue to operate nominally. While the mission has just begun, we did just see liftoff of the last Delta rocket. Here's ULA President and CEO, Tori Bruno. Well, good afternoon. A lot of you know that the Delta IV Heavy is of course the most metal of all rockets, setting itself on fire before it blasts into space. But I also wanna talk about its tremendous contribution to our nation, to exploration, to national security. The Delta IV Heavy still today flies missions that no other rocket can fly. Soon Vulcan will pick up that mantle and we're going to retire this venerable rocket that has made so much important work for our country. And I wanna thank everyone who has been involved with the Delta IV Heavy. We have many employees who are here for the very first Delta IV launch who are still here now for the last Delta IV launch to send off this great vehicle into its well-earned retirement. Thank you all. Hi everyone, I'm now joined by ULA's Launch System Director, Bill Cullen. Bill, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me, Andrea. Um, we just saw a really magnificent launch for the last time. Um, this has a little bit of a special meaning to you, is my understanding, because you started your career working on the Delta program. I did. So tell us a little bit about what this experience means to you. Well, so it, it is bittersweet, yeah. but, but it's very exciting, and, and it's a great evolution. And, and everything that Delta has done, Delta II, Delta IV, uh, Atlas V is, is being done better on Vulcan. And, and so this is a great evolutionary step. And it is bittersweet to see the last one, but uh, there's great things ahead. So. It is. It's exciting, too. I know you and I have worked on Vulcan for a long time. Um, so it's exciting to see it, but bittersweet, obviously, to be the last one. Um, this Delta Heavy configuration is obviously a fan favorite. I know you've seen the, the most he heavy metal of rockets. Um, so definitely a unique and cool configuration. Um, what is it about the Delta Heavy that makes it so special? Well, so two things. It, it all boils down to the mission capability, so which which is lift capability in many ways, and then on orbit. But the the lift capability, the no solid motors, pure liquid, uh, the three strap ons, the slow majestic lift off it it really is just is inspiring. Yeah. and and uh, there's nothing like it. You know, it makes your heart uh, go. I really felt it. Like I feel like more than any other rocket launch, you really feel it yeah. in your bones and in the vehicle. So yeah. it's just such a cool thing to see and kind of sad for it to be the last one. So speaking of last, let's we'll talk a little bit about first. So um, earlier in January, we experienced our first Vulcan rocket. Um, went off pretty flawlessly, in my personal opinion, Absolutely. which is kind of a big deal um, for the first one. We also have an exciting time coming up with the first crew flight test coming up here very shortly, actually. So with all those firsts, you know, we are looking at one of our lasts with the Delta um, configuration and the Delta Heavy. So what would you say was this program's greatest accomplishment? The greatest is, is hard to pick. <laughs> the, uh, Just pick you know, one. So, or a so, so if you look at if you look at all the national security things, intelligence, the the GPS constellation, everybody uses GPS, right? And uh, and you know the the mapping capabilities. I mean, you want to know where you're driving. You want to see what uh, what your house looks like on in satellite view. Everybody can do that in, in part because of the satellites. And every launched. day we use it every day. Right? Every yeah. day it's touched all yeah. of us. Yeah, it's amazing. It's such a cool thing. I mean, working at ULA, you know, just to be a part of that small experience that we have here, but know the huge impact that it has. I mean, just an exciting time. Yeah, we're enablers. We are enablers yeah. and we work on rockets, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Well, Bill, um, that's all the questions that I have for you today, but I do appreciate you joining us and just really thank you for being here for this exciting 
last and looking forward to a year of firsts for us and many, many more coming here in the future. Absolutely, to mission success. Great, thank you so much. Yep. Well, we're just about to log up here for today, um, but before we do, I do want to thank Ben Chilton and Rob Gannon for their support of today's broadcast. You can follow more about ULA and learn more about our rockets at ulalaunch.com. However, before we log off, let's look at one more majestic look of that last Delta launch, lifting off the pad for the very last time. Thanks for joining us. T-minus 10, T -minus ten eight, nine, seven, eight, seven, six, six four, five. We have ignition, two, one. one. And liftoff of the final United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket carrying NROL-70 for the National Reconnaissance Office and closing Delta's six-decade legacy of excellence in